Making this video as a little bit of a PSA for anyone with an S2000 and a baffled oil pan. If you're a fan of the channel, you may have remembered the video I put up in 2018 of getting this alloy craft baffle welded in. I just happened to remove the oil pan from the car for other reasons. I'm actually changing out the oil squirter bolts in hopes of chasing down my low oil pressure at idle uh, issue I'm working with. But this is one of those things that's kind of out of sight, out of mind after you get it welded in your pan and thrown back on the engine and RTV'd shut after all these years. So I've been running this probably just about 30 track days on it, many autocrosses, and when I drop the pan, it's the first time I've looked at this in six years, the baffle is cracked here, it is cracked on these two weld tabs, it is cracked on this weld tab completely through and it is cracked through on these two weld tabs. So the only thing keeping this baffle in here now is these three welds up front and the fact that the alloy craft design actually has these bent tabs with the intention that you just weld the bent tabs to the pan so that with thermal expansion over time the baffle welds do not get pulled on and pushed on and causing them to crack. So that design is good on paper, but in reality, it looks like the bends failed from either vibrations over all these miles and track miles, or just from heat expansion and flexing that bend over and over again. So the actual welds themselves are fantastic. Um, they didn't fail at all. They're all in still very good shape. It's just the baffle itself failed at the bends. So, I know that Alloy Craft is kind of an old name from S2KI back over six years ago. Can't really buy an Alloy Craft baffle anymore. However, after looking at some baffles online and look, kind of considering what I wanted to do for the pan moving forward, I came across this image of the PLM baffle, which looks to be identical to this Alloy Craft baffle. So, my assumption was that the design and the blueprints or whatever, or whatever stock was left with the Alloy Craft was acquired by PLM, being that it, it's literally identical looking. Um, and the design intent is the same for how to weld it. So I'm definitely not gonna be welding in a PLM baffle to replace this since it's gonna fail at the exact same spots over time. But keep that in mind, guys. I did reach out to PLM to give them this information. I don't know how many people, like I said, out of sight, out of mind kind of thing, weld these in and forget about them and only pull them off their engine when they blow up or whatever. But um, moving forward, I'm probably going to grind this out, grind the welds flat, and run no baffle moving forward. So I've been reading so much conflicting information online about how baffles are needed versus not needed. There's a lot of fast guys I know, and I got a few comments on the baffle installation video from people saying that the baffle is absolutely unnecessary. This area that is tight to the pan over here is actually slowing the flow of oil back to the pickup so it can actually cause problems. I haven't had any problems. I have an oil pressure gauge and I've kept an eye on it and I've looked at it in all my GoPro footage under really hard turns. I've never had noticeable oil pressure drops on the analog gauge. Of course, I'm not data logging, so there may very well be stuff that I can't see by eye. But yeah, hopefully this information helps you guys out a little bit. Um, definitely, uh, if you've been running one for a while, whether it's you know black tracks alloy craft you know and some of the bolt-in baffles too even you might want to drop your pan and check them um, if I were to do a baffle moving forward I would probably go with the Toda uh, because the price is pretty much reasonable it's a brand new OEM pan and they include a uh, BSPT plug here for an oil temp sensor uh, to save some money I'm gonna remove the baffle from here and that Toda pan has a bolted down design. I wish I had some extra funds to buy one and dissect it and show you guys, but the only thing that kind of turned me off to buying it was the baffle and the, the instructions online from Japan say that you may need to remove your transmission and separate your transmission 10 millimeters to install that on your engine. However, an easy way to get around that would be to just remove the baffle and trim out the pickup location a little more than the Toto design. I have a lot of confidence based on some really fast guys I know that don't have a baffle. Some guys are doing wheel to wheel racing with these cars without a baffle and some guys that are faster than me in time attack that 
have not been running a baffle and still are running. So um, I'm going to take their experience and try this out. If I do have any problems, I'll probably bite the bullet and end up dropping in a tow to pan. But for now, that's my plan moving forward. You can see that's how much oil is left in the pan after you drain your oil from the car. And this was draining for hours with the plug out. And you can just see if I tip it all the way up, how slow it's trapped from like leaking forward. You know, the argument is too, is that draining back to the sump is definitely a concern. So uh, what, there is no clear answer on what the right thing to do is, what the right baffle to use is, or to keep trusting the OEM design. There's a lot of people that stand by the OEM design. I'll give it a shot. So before I even dropped the pan and realized I had this cracked baffle issue, I took an oil sample and sent it to Blackstone Labs. And that's what's shown here on the screen right now because the engine is making a knocking noise when it's warmed up in an idle. So I'm trying to diagnose if that is related to low oil pressure at idle, which is why I replaced the banjo bolts, or if I have a worn rod bearing or a you know journal bearing wearing out on the, on the crank. The report showed normal wears. There wasn't any increased, abnormally increased wear content for aluminum, which definitely means that this kind of having the ability to vibrate around in here where it cracked uh, did not cause tons of shavings in the oil. Maybe over time there's been minuscule amounts of it, but I'm just glad that it wasn't worse than it was and cost me an engine, at least I think for now, because I am in the process of diagnosing that knock at idle to see if the engine is still healthy or not. So I will follow up with a video on that, getting more in depth with that. Blackstone reported that the oil looked fine to them and there wasn't anything that stood out to them abnormal. Um, but the one thing that stood out to me was a high content of titanium in the oil. After I asked them about that and why they weren't concerned about that, they actually came back and said it's actually the oil itself. So I've been running this oil ever since I bought the car, whether it's track or street use. And the note on the can here, not just a marketing gimmick, it actually says fluid titanium technology, which helps with the high temperature performance. And that is what the high titanium content in my oil was, was actually from the oil itself. So there's nothing in the engine that's titanium related that was wearing into the oil. It's Here's just a perspective on how much oil, this is five and a half quarts about, how much that looks like inside the S2000 oil pan with out of the car. As you can see, oil pan's not perfectly level and some spilled over the edge already, but pretty much line to line with this edge being leaned in the car and you have about an inch to the top on that side so I don't know if that'll help you in your decision to run baffle or no baffle but a lot of people you know say with this much oil in the pan as long as you keep the oil topped up to a high level on the dipstick or slightly above that it's gonna be very hard to starve the pump being that the pickup kisses the bottom of the pan way down here so keep that in mind guys so since I have this off the car, my plan is to install a bung here for oil temp. Um, traditionally, if you look at the Toyota racing pan, they have the bung welded near the plug on this side. However, this is where the AC bracket is, and the AC compressor takes up a lot of space here. So I'm going to plan to have the bung welded right here, just so the sensor and all the wiring when it comes out of the car is not exposed to any debris from the racing on track or whatever, or driving on the street, that could potentially damage the wire. So if I do it here and thread it in here, everything will be hidden. Of course, you're not getting the sensor as low. It's still gonna be very low compared to the height of the oil level when you have it to the proper height. And keep in mind, this is just filled up with five and a half quarts. With this installed in the car, you're gonna have the volume of the oil pump and everything in here, displacing this level even higher. So this is the gauge. I'm gonna run for oil temperature here. This is the same style gauge, the Racer Gauge N2. I believe they're discontinued now, so I was lucky I was able to find this here in 2024. But just a USDM model, so it's in Fahrenheit. Same exact style as the oil pressure gauge I currently have in the car. I'm gonna be going from a single pod on the pillar to a dual pod. Here's the bung I purchased. So this is a 1 8 inch BSPT, which is British pipe tapered thread. And this is the proper thread you need for the DEFI gauge. I had such a difficult time finding one of these weld-on bungs in America that I had to go to Australia for this. You can see this is made in Australia. 
Um, $9 part, but I ended up paying over $30 shipping just to get to this US, but I wanted the threads to be correct. I'm sure a lot of people thread the sensor into uh, NPT, 1.8 NPT, and it will thread in, but they have a different thread pitch and different angle of the taper on the threads, so they're not really designed to work together. So if you did stack a ton of Teflon tape, you may be able to create a leak-free seal. However, to do it right, you want to get a 1.8 inch PT, which is BSPT. So this here is the oil temperature sensor. Here's the oil temperature uh, routing for the wire. It kind of comes along. This is my pressure sensor over here. They kind of come out of the same area with this OEM plastic shroud here that kind of holds all the wires in there. And I'm gonna zip tie this kind of to the AC bracket. The Tota pan comes with a welded on bung on the passenger side, but I decided to do it on the driver's side and I will show you underneath the car why right now. This is where my temperature sensor is gonna plug into. I'm gonna zip tie it alongside of this AC connector from the factory, real clean right there. And the bung I had welded on is right here. And the idea is, if you look straight on, it is protected from any debris by the AC bracket. If it was on this side, it is next to the uh, drain plug, it would be a lot more susceptible to debris and whatnot to hit that wire on the temperature probe. So keeping it behind the AC bracket here and the bung right here, still have it pretty low in the pan and close to the pickup, which is ideal.